Miss Cabot, please. Oh, hello, Mr. Hoffman. Hello. Miss Cabot, your husband is here. Tell him to come in. Hmm. It's a streamlined marriage. Go right in, Mr. Hoffman. Thanks. <laughs> Wooly. Hello, darling. What have you done to Prissy? She's crying. She's upset about my leaving. Did you get the tickets? Yeah. Outside suite, bath and private Sunday. Strictly delight. Oh, you don't really mind, do you? I can't help it if I'm American and a little gaudy. Maybe my one and only, and I want to do it up brown. Hang yourself up in the corner, darling, will you? I'm filing away the accumulation of my long and varied career as an art critic. Why not toss it all in the wastebasket? Oh, someday somebody might want to write a book called The Life and Times of Carol Cabot, Art Critic. Confident little woman. Oh. Did you get the things for Ricky? Eric. You didn't buy him that sailor rig. I took both. The suit you like, too. Oh, you spoil him dreadfully. He shouldn't have so many things. Who bought him the camera, a kid of seven? Well, after all the stuff you got him, I didn't want him to think his mother was a heel. Oh, I haven't told you. JB's going to pay my salary all the time we're gone, and I'm going to send him some articles from Berlin. Isn't that marvelous? But, Coco, I thought this was to be a vacation. I can hardly wait to see Dresden. Munich is nicer. <laughs> wait till you taste real buck beer. Dusseldorf. Lovely weird Dusseldorf. Sounds like something made out of pastry. There's a little place in the Bavarian Alps on the side of a mountain where I used to go skiing. It looks like a doll's town. Oh, darling, let's go there. I want to see everything. In the summer, there are flowers, tiny flowers all over the mountain. You can lie in them and look right down into the town. From way across the valley, you can hear the little bells on the goats. Just lie there in the sun. Sometimes it's very hot, but every time a cloud passes, it's like a cool hand. Oh, this isn't fair. I've still got work to do. Uh, couch, but no privacy. Yes? Dr. Gerhardt to see you. Dr. Gerhardt. Here? Yes. Send him in, please. That's funny. What does he want with me? To wish you bon voyage. <laughs> he loses his heart to all his obstetrical cases. I've never seen him outside his office or the hospital. Do I intrude? Of course not. Come in, doctor. How are you, Hugo? <laughs> it's been months. You must forgive me. I've been busy very. Mrs. Hoffman. And how is little Ricky? Oh, in a dither about going. Acts exactly as if he had rabies. The whole world has a rabies. Pier 86, that is the Bremen, no? Yes, sailing at noon. You prefer a German boat? Well, <laughs> we wanted to take the Queen Mary, but she doesn't go to Germany. This visit, it is unusual, I know. But I wish to speak to you where there were not so many people like at the boat. Well, sit down, please. You look wilted. Thank you. All the way here, I sweat it. But not because it is hot. I come to ask you a favor. One moment, I'm afraid that you will say no. And the next, that if you say yes, perhaps it is wrong for me to ask it. Whatever it is, it's yes. You know that, Hugo. I've just learned that my brother is in Dachau. You ever heard of that place? It's a concentration camp, isn't it? My brother was sent to Dachau six months ago. I didn't even know you had a brother. I 
I do not often speak of him. When I do, it sounds like boasting. In Berlin, he held a very great position. There are some who called him the first philosopher in all Europe. Ernst Gerhardt, I never connected you. Not really. I'm just another doctor in Yorkville. No matter. I'm not in a concentration camp. Last week, I have a letter from Switzerland from an old friend. He was in the same class with Ernst at school. It says Ernst was arrested six months ago. But why? What had he done? The letter does not say, but I can guess. Ernst was not the man to keep quiet about things he believed to be wrong. Oh, he may have been released by now. You do not get out of Dachau so easily. My friend says it is possible to get out only if you have money to bribe. That's how he got free himself. Please don't think I come for money. Five hundred American dollars I can manage. And in Dachau, that is a fortune. But I do not know any way to get it to him. Since his arrest, his wife and son have moved. And I have no longer any friends in Germany after 20 years in America. We'll take it to him. We'll be glad to. Of course you will, Hugo. You are very generous, my friends. It may not be easy. A concentration camp is not like an American prison. Oh, I bet they're not half as bad as they say they are. I hope you are right. Anyway, I'm an American. They won't stop me. It is why I turn to you. Are you yet naturalized? Oh, I can get my second papers any time. I have been meaning to. He's waiting for someone to give him a lift down to the battery. He abhors subways. I told him he ought to hitchhike. How long will you stay in Germany? I have three months leave. I have to be back in six months or come in on the quota again, but I won't take the chance. Don't worry, we'll have plenty of time. I just have to settle some business with my father. I know. What you say you will do, you will do. Somehow. Tomorrow at the boat, I will bring you the money. I have to sell some things. Liebe Freund. Your hat. Thank you. He was really worried about his brother. Wet. He was crying. Mm. Can't blame him. He believes everything he reads in the papers. Well, after all, there are concentration camps and things like that. It isn't all just fiction. No, but you've got to take a lot of these things with a grain of salt. The newspapers didn't exaggerate a little bit now and then. They'd never sell any papers. When I told the elevator man this morning that I was going to Germany on my vacation, he looked at me as if I were out of my mind. Well, if there is uh, any doubt in your mind, darling, I, I could go alone. I could wind up the business with my father in four weeks, and then we can go to Bermuda. Sorry, mister. No soap. Oh, don't mind him. He just works here. Sind Sie Deutsche? Ja, natürlich. Dort drüben, bitte. Heil Hitler. He knew I was German. Your accent, of course. It's funny, I don't feel a bit as if I really belong here. I feel like a tourist. You'd better. I'd hate to be a little knick-knack you picked up abroad somewhere, especially with this.
Park Hospital. Park Hospital. Uh, can you reach in my pocket? I don't want to wake Ricky. Which pocket? No, let a little one sleep. Where do you go? Berlin. Then you will give me the tickets later, yeah? Of course, and thank you. Bitte sehr. All right, then. How oh, anyone can say the Germans have been brutalized. Propaganda. Listen to this. It was announced that uh, because of the labor shortage and the extreme uh, advisability, urgency is close, I guess, of gathering the harvest, several thousand farm workers are being brought from Ostmark. That's uh, what they call Austria now that it's part of the Reich. I told you there wasn't any unemployment here. More jobs than men. Seems too good to believe. You can't get around it. These boys are doing a big job. The government is going to put out radio sets for only 35 marks. How much is that? Oh, uh, rice marks are worth more than tourist marks, about 40 cents, I think. Uh, 12 plus 2, uh, $14 a piece. And our little one at home costs 25. And these are much better, according to Goebbels. There are already nine and a half million radio sets in Germany, more than in all the rest of Europe. I read somewhere they were making the small car cheaper than the Ford. Yes, the Volkswagen, much cheaper. Uh, only about $400. How do they do it? Well, if the government says you have to make it at that price, the industry has to make it, that's all. You have to hand it to them. Industrially, they are way ahead of the rest of Europe, in some ways even of America. They should worry about unions over here. And the government even fixes it so you pay on installment all in advance. By the time the car is delivered, it's all paid for. Is it any good? Well, they haven't produced any yet. <coughs> Why are we slowing up? Waiting for a signal, I guess. What are the guards for? Do you suppose those are prisoners? No. No, not prisoners. Those are the workers from Ostmark you read about in the newspaper. Our German brothers. We have to guard them because they're stupid. They would run away from a country where there is no unemployment. Only soldiers and labor camps. Why you can buy a radio for 35 marks, which you call 40 cents. But it is the same as a dollar to a German. Of course, you cannot tune in Moscow or Paris or London. But only a traitor wants to hear what our newspapers don't tell us for our own good. Those poor, stupid Austrians would rather be home with their families. But they can't have ration cards or stand in line to buy bread than to work here in a country where you can buy an automobile for only 400 American dollars, which will be delivered someday. Maybe. Heil Hitler. He's crazy going around saying things like that to strangers. He could get into a lot of trouble. I guess we have that sympathetical look. Well, if anybody else starts anything like that, duck. We've got to be careful, darling. Keep our ears and traps shut. Stick to our own business. We don't want to get mixed up in all this. Don't worry, mister. I just came along for the ride. Ich bin Frieda, Frieda Heinke, Günthers Frau. Wissen Sie noch, Sie waren mit ihm zusammen in derselben Schule. Oh ja, ne? Mein Mädchenname war Frieda Sturm. Oh ja, natürlich. <lacht> oh, Carol, this is uh, Günther Heinkel's wife. He was my best friend. We went to school together. Um, my wife doesn't... Uh, oh, <lacht> my Frau spricht nicht Deutsch. Nein, it's stupid of me, I know, but Eric already spoke English when I met him. Well, then I speak English. I can practice. How do you do? How do you do? You are very pretty. Thank you. So are you. Me? Oh, 
Oh, I never think how I look. We have so much work to do. Here we do not have time for masseuses and dressmakers and cosmetics, like in America. Oh, you don't need it. You're naturally lovely. No. I'm afraid I come out of a jar. Yeah? Oh, I have tried them all. Mud baths, permanent waves, paint, lipstick, all those silly things. But that was before, when there was nothing better to do. Before what? Before... Before Macht übernahme. I don't know how to say it. Oh, uh, literally it means uh, the taking over of power. By the women, you mean? By the party, naturally. Oh, well, my, my father was supposed to meet me here. No, I came in his place. At his age, you understand, he doesn't like riding in the tram car. Tram car? Why, here's his own automobile. We cannot waste petrol for private cars. Oh, well, <laughs> let's get out of here. <laughs> they take care of the luggage. The streetcar will be fine. It'll be fun. Well, where's Ricky? Oh, there he is. You have a child. That's what we call him, but it's more like having a grasshopper. He's blunt. <laughs> he has never seen real soldiers before. <laughs> Ricky, this is Mrs. Heinkel. Hmm? Are they going to war? <laughs> there isn't any war to go to. Oh. Oh. Pretty soon you'll be big enough to join the Jungfrau. Someday, perhaps, you'll be a party leader. I want to be a lone ranger. What's this in this? A character on the radio at home. Don't you know the Lone Ranger? hi Silver! Today, no meat, tomorrow, no butter, the next day, no sugar. <laughs> 1938 becomes like 1918. Not so, Otto? Peter? Well, you speak English? Nein, Herr Rector. But you understand. A little. You spoke it well 20 years ago. Tja, 20 years. 20 Jahre. That is a long time. Yeah. <laughs> he says that's a long time. Yeah. That's true. A century, not so. I'm living beyond my years. Sixty isn't old. A man's age is no longer measured by his years. Yeah. The old Germany disappears. Germany, I understood, it understood me. The new Germany is for the young people, so I'm old, not so? For six months, I do not leave this house. That's why I asked you to come here, Eric. You must stay here and manage the factory, or we must sell. I cannot breathe this Berlin air any longer. There is a little village on the Rhine, above Cologne, a very little village. And all the people who live there are old, like the vineyards. The young have gone away. You see only faces gnarled like the vines. I will go there. <laughs> there I can live in peace until I die. Of course, I think you are making a mistake. Oh, no, no, Erich. You don't understand yet what this Berlin is. This Berlin does to my health. All the doctors say the same. It's a bad time to sell with our foreign market going to pieces. <laughs> you don't think I want to leave after 30 years? But I must. <laughs> Not so. Does old man Fryer still live next door? Ludwig? Yes, he's still here. <coughs> Every Saturday night, for as long as I can remember, Mr. Fryer played chess with father <laughs> and laughed. <laughs> he always loses. <laughs> Not anymore. He doesn't come here since months. Mother used to say if he ever won, we'd never see him again. His son was arrested, the uh, older one. The one who wore glasses? Yeah, he was always reading and remembering. 
Which is worse. That was the doorbell. Bitte? Es hat geklingelt. Da, gehen Sie bitte. Ja, natürlich. Verzeihung, Herr Direktor. Ich hab's nicht gehört. Der Freihof boy, he meant to make a joke. He said, der Führer once promised not to take Austria, and now he promised not to take Czechoslovakia, and soon he would promise not to take the world. <laughs> you always did lead with his chin. Yes, but it was my misfortune that he said it while he was here at dinner with his father. Someone reported it to the police. Who else was here? Only myself. And, uh, Otto, of course. Frau Heinkel, Herr Director. Na, komm doch rein. There has just been an announcement on the radio. Dr. Goebbels is to go on the air tonight. Right away, any minute. Später, wir essen nach der Rede weiter. Well, wouldn't you rather finish dinner? Eric and I will have plenty of chances to listen to Goebbels. In Germany, we all listen when the Herr Doctor speaks. It is forbidden not to. No, Frida? When our leaders speak, we are glad to listen. Dr. Goebbels is a grossartige Redner. In allen Ländern aufgerufen, sich gegen die fortschreitende Anarchisierung Europas durch den Bolschewismus zur Wehr zu setzen. What's he saying? He's raising Cain with the Bolsheviks. Shh! And Bolshevismus geschlossen and entschlossen gegenüber. Wir kennen sie. Uns kann man kein X für ein U vormachen. Darum auch hassen beide uns so abgrundtief. Denn wir entstammen einer anderen, besseren, neuen Welt. going to be fought. Looks like something you see at the circus. The world may laugh at us now, but someday they won't laugh. There's a condor legion back from fighting in Spain. Gives you a boo, doesn't it? In the stomach. Imagine what it does to me, a German. Like it? Love it. Me too. You especially. This is the Germany I've dreamed of. What do you say we say over here? Don't go back at all. Eric, you're not serious. Well, we'll do much better running the factory and trying to sell it. I haven't had a decent offer yet. But we can't. Why not? Technically, I'm still a German citizen. You're my wife. Eric, please. And Ricky likes it here, now that he started in school. Let's not argue about it. But but, darling, you just said you loved it. I do, here tonight, but 
It isn't like home. It never could be. It happens to be my home. It does not. New York's your home. Our home. You've always said so. Yes, I know. that. That's the way I felt. But now everything has changed. Germany is alive, exciting. The horse vessel song says, make way, make way. Here come the brown battalions. Let's not kid ourselves. Those boys are going somewhere. If you don't mind, I'll take the detour. Well, joke all you like. But at least Berlin isn't out of the world anymore. Here's where history is being made, right here. And that's where I want to be. Oh, Eric, Addis Ababa, Port Sider, even across the East River in Red Hook, but not here, please. But what's got you so down on Germany all of a sudden? I'm not. Really, I'm not. Dear. Oh, here you are. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you'd be hiding off here like a love affair. It's such a big place. I looked everywhere. <laughs> No, of course not. I wasn't sure you were coming. You didn't say definitely. <laughs> I only said yes. Did you tell her? Well, no, not yet. Tell me what? The money you brought from America for Ernst Gerhard. You must not try to deliver it to him. You told her? Well, I, I thought she might help. There is no need to lie. Of course he told me. He was worried if it is right. He wanted my opinion. I told him it is impossible. Natürlich. Natürlich. How could you? Hugo particularly asked us not to talk about it. He had no right to ask that. Ernst Gerhard is a traitor. But we promised. I tell you what the mir gesagt hast. What'd she say? You wouldn't smuggle money into Sing Sing for a murderer, would you? Oh, this is different. Yes. This is noch schlimmer. Even worse. But lots of people send money to their friends in concentration camps all the time. What's wrong about it? It can get us all into trouble. You want to sell the factory, don't you? Be sensible, darling. Ernst Gerhard is an enemy of Germany. Who helps him is an enemy also. He was just a philosopher. He was against the government. He said we shouldn't have burned the books. And that Hitler is the same as Stalin. Think of others beside yourself. Of Erich. He's German. Think of Ricky. You wouldn't want to do anything that would jeopardize him, would you? Nonsense. You're just trying to scare me. But I don't care what you say. I'm not going to be frightened. I keep my promises. Anyway, it's none of your business. I'm going home. That's the game. Nightmare. I was afraid you were sick. It was an awful dream. What was it, darling? What did you dream? I forget. Is he all right? Oh, just a bad dream. But he's all right now, aren't you, Ricky? I want to sleep with you. Please, Mommy, let me sleep in your bed. Don't be a crybaby. Oh, he's frightened. Poor little Ricky. That only encourages it. Sei ruhig. Schlaf jetzt. Ja, Vater. Don't forget, darling. The Lone Ranger isn't afraid of dreams. Now, you go to sleep like a good boy, won't you? Yes, Mommy. Too bad you aren't always so concerned about Ricky. You want to begin that again about Gerhard? My wife is not going to make a fool of herself and get us all into trouble. That's final. Why didn't you tell me Frida was coming? Can't she let you out of her sight even for a couple of hours? What have you got against Frida, anyway? There once was a Nordic named Frida, always quoting the words of the leader. She wasn't born, people say, in the usual way. The Fuhrer simply decreed her. Where did you get that? Out of my head, dear. I'm clever that way. 
Why don't you admit it? You're jealous. Oh, doesn't that make you smug and lovely? Because of her looks, I mean. Because hers don't come out of a jar. Huh. As you said. Did you think I meant that? Well, if you didn't mean it, why did you say it? But a flatterer, silly. I wanted her to like me, but right away she makes cracks and starts saying things to you in German, so I can't understand. We've never said a single word in German you could have any objections to. Now, isn't that a comfort? Would you prefer we had? I'd prefer not to have my husband reassure me he hasn't been making love to another woman right in front of my eyes. Good grief, what you want? He thinks the fellow doth protest too much. I give up. Darling, let's not fight. So silly. As if we didn't love each other. I, I hate to be mad. It always does something to me inside. I'm sorry if I was mean, but you were so bossy, and I, I can't stand being bossed. Please, won't you try to understand my viewpoint, and I'll try to understand yours. Listen, Herr Hoffman. The lady's talking to you. Crying. What do you think, gargoyle? I'm sorry, Coco. Let's get back. It's about time. Boss, who do you mean, Nick? He's in London. I'm running the show now. Sure. Where you been for the past six months? Don't you read the papers? My special correspondent in Berlin, that's me. I've even started to write my first book. <laughs> okay, boy, I'll see you. My friends don't take me very seriously yet, but don't worry. The Nazis will do anything for a big American news agency. They want to be sure and include us out of the next war. Kenneth Delane speaking. No, I didn't understand it that way. The embassy is acting unofficially. Hasn't issued any formal order for Americans to get out of the country. It merely suggests that if they haven't any urgent business here, to be very smart to go. That's right. What is it now? Oh. No. No, thanks. Not this afternoon. The little man with the mustache has ruined my putting stroke. Some other time, boy, huh? Say, cut off all these phones, will you, honey? Yeah, I'm right in the middle of a very important conference. Now! Would you mind telling me where you got that hat? <laughs> huh? It's the first time I've ever been called a conference. Don't mind if I seem to be staring at you, because I'm just... just staring at you. <laughs> Gosh, it's been months and months and months since I've seen a smart-looking American woman. Oh, I'm not really smart, just sort of Lexington Avenue. Oh, no. My homing instinct is unerring. You are the breath, the glamour, the lovely odor of 5th and 42nd in late afternoon. Oh, dear, I thought I was at least Madison in the 50s at shopping time. <laughs> you must have been away a long time. Yes, yeah, century. Five years, in fact. Three in London and two here. Say, tell me, do they still sell hamburgers and ice cream sodas in America? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like them? I'm mad about them. We are gonna get along. <laughs> Well, what with the world coming apart at the seams, it's pleasant sometimes to ponder the relative merits of hamburgers and sodas. Is there really going to be a war? Well, Shiki, that's Hitler. Shiko Garubo is his father's name. <laughs> Shiki's due to throw another convulsion at the Nazi Congress in Nuremberg. And that may be a signal for the German army to march into the Sudetenland. If that happens, the Czechs will fight. And my advice to you is not to wait and see. I can't leave until my husband sells the factory. Oh, your husband. Yeah, I forgot, he's German, isn't he? And now as to your question. No, there won't be the slightest trouble about delivering that money to your friend in the concentration camp, because that is one way the Nazis have of getting their hands on Baluta. Foreign currency, that is. 
You mean they take it away from him? You keep some of the money yourself. Let the people he bribes know that they'll get the rest as soon as he's safely out of the country. That's the way it's done. What's his name? Ernst Gerhardt. Gerhardt. Oh, Professor Gerhardt of Berlin University. Uh huh. I filed a story on him just a couple of weeks ago. Story? Was he a very close friend of yours? We know his brother in New York. Why? Oh, he's dead. Dead? The commanding officer of the Schutzstaffel headquarters told me that Ernest Gerhardt died in Dachau of acute appendicitis. Poor Hugo. Was it in the papers? I'm sure my husband would have seen it. Well, in the New York papers, not here. Well, that's funny. I thought he was famous. <laughs> my lady of the ivory tower. Honestly, I'd forgotten such people existed. Don't you read the papers? What's the use of reading a lot of stuff when you don't know what to believe? Uh. My devoted public. What are you going to do with the money now? Take it back to the doctor, I guess. Well, Professor Gerhardt's family might find it very useful. I have the faintest idea where they live. No, I think we can fix that. Hello. Get me Colonel Deckert, please. The Schutzstaffel and the Gestapo work hand in hand. It's amazing what they know. Hello, Ed Deckard. It's Delane, American correspondent, remember? Yeah, I'm fine. Fine, thanks. Say, I just called up to get the address of the widow of Ernst Gerhardt, who you said died in Dachau of appendicitis. Not over the phone. Well, don't you recognize my voice? Well, can't you check by ringing me back here at the office? Donald Duck. Yeah. Yes, I, uh, I understand all about that, Ed Deckard, but I, I don't think that you appreciate the fact that I have an American gentleman in my office. Yeah, a great industrialist. I was just boasting to him about the efficiency of your organization. As a matter of fact, I just made him a bet that you could give me the address of anybody I named within one minute after I picked up the phone. Oh, thanks, thanks very much. Never fails to work. <laughs> There's nothing like laying it on with a shovel when you're dealing with the Heinies. Look what Schickelgruber did with it. Convinced them they ought to rule the world because they're blonde Aryans. <laughs> they forget he's a little on the dark side himself. Ah, thank you, Sean. Weisenstrasse 23. Thanks very much. Thank you. Come on. I'll drive you down there. No, oh, you're much too busy. Do you know how to speak German? Yes, danke schön. Oh, no, that's not enough. I can't let a beautiful woman wander the streets of Berlin when she doesn't even know how to say no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I give up. I like having it laid on with a shovel, too. <laughs> Don't you make them get out of the way? It doesn't do to irritate stormtroopers on the loose. Well, what goes on? <laughs> I don't get it. The brown shirt blitzkrieg against old people and kids. Jews? No, in this instance, they're Czechs. There's quite a few of them live down in this quarter. Hey, you see that garbage truck? The bully boys bring their own filth, dump it, and make the checks clean it up. It's a charming little pastime. Why don't the police stop it? Only one man can stop this sort of thing. He invented it. Los, los, wait up. They let him go. He said he wanted to change his clothes. He told him the suit he had on was the only good one he had. If he got it dirty, he'd lose his job. So they told him to go and change. Well, you'd think they'd be afraid he'd get away. Oh, no. He knows that they'd only get him in the long run. Make it worse for him. Yes, is he? He's been American as a journalist. What are you looking for here? I see me only the theater. I don't know the Americans. They have only a little with the swine. Warum denn? Das Essen in Prag ist genauso schlecht. <lacht> ja, wunderbar. What's so funny? Was sagt die Dame? Dass die Tschechen Barbaren sind. 
Is es still Hammer Cannon? Stop talking to him. Sie sagt, dass der Chasen immer mit den Fingern essen. <laughs> Don't look so glum. I just told him that you said the Czechs were barbarians and ate with their fingers anyway. You didn't. Smiley little idiot and keep on smiling. <laughs> Nicht so hübsch wie die Amerikanerinnen, weil unsere deutschen Mädels sich keine solchen hübschen Kleider kaufen können. Ja. Da ist er wieder. Steht zur Verfügung. Never forget it. Never. Perhaps I should have got you out of there sooner, but I wanted you to see with your own eyes. I gather you're one of those people who pride themselves on being fair to the Nazis. No, I... I just try to discount propaganda. <laughs> that just means that you've swallowed Dr. Goebbels hook, line, and sinker. That's Gobble Gobble's favorite trick, making people discount facts. And in Valuta. My English is so little, Gnedeke Frau, but my heart thanks you. I'm sure Hugo would want you to come to America where he can take care of you. I may be able to get you a visa. No, I stay. But Joachim will go. He will be happy. Is that your son? Yes. My son. Joachim Gerhard was one of the top surgeons here. Was? Yes. Naturally, he loses his position at the hospital and his practice, too, when it is known his father is in Dachau. Well, why can't you both come to America? If that's not enough money, I, I'm sure that... It is not the money. I cannot leave Ernst. He's dead, of course. But for 40 years, we were never separated. Soon we will be together again in German earth. Someday, beautiful things will grow in Germany again. And we will be a part of them. I understand. I'll tell you, go. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to be getting back to the office. You will not stay and see Joachim. He is for a walk. He will not be long. No, I wish we could, but I must be getting back, too. No one knows where I am. You are sweet, my dear, to come and see me. And brave. Just stubborn, I'm afraid. Oh, what lovely work. Do you do it? No, Joachim makes it. You are surprised because he is a man. It's so delicate. His hands are used to delicate work. He does it to keep his fingers from becoming stiff and clumsy, so that he can operate properly again someday. It's really very beautiful work. Well, auf Wiedersehen, Gnedje Frau. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. The Schutzstaffel. What do they say about Ernst? How he dies? Well, they told me he died of acute appendicitis. So? My man had a blind arm operation gehabt for 20 years. What did she say, my friends? What'd she say? Oh, it's more propaganda, my dear. She says her husband had his appendix out 20 years ago. What do you expect? Soft music? This is a revolution. Certainly a few people get pushed around. But the Nazis were doing it for fun. If you could have seen them. It's nothing to what the Czechs have been doing to the Sudeten Germans. 
Anyway, you can't build a new world without a few people running wild. Well, it wasn't just mob violence. I could understand that. But they went about it in such a methodical, disciplined way. It was horrible. That's their new world. Why don't you look at the good side, what they're accomplishing? These. You know what they're made of? They look like flannel. Wood fiber. Well, I've seen dresses made of glass at home. In our factory, we are using grease made of lumber byproducts. You have seen Buna. It's better than rubber. And now they've even found a way of turning whale oil into butter. Ooh, I'm glad I'm reducing. Uh, look at the roads and factories they've built. Laugh them off. Not to mention all the nice, shiny airplanes, tanks, and guns. Always that pacifist pap. She's got you talking just like Schickelgruber. Like what? Schickelgruber. Where did you pick that up? It was his father's name. Don't you love it? Not so loud, will you? Nobody can hear us. It's all very fine you're sounding off, but I haven't got an American passport. It's not very funny to me. Oh, darling, let's get out of this fire trap. I want to go home. How much longer do we have to stay here? Give me some time. I've had one offer already. An offer? How much? 400,000 marks. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Then we can go right away. If I take it. If you take it. Eric. It's silly to take the first proposition. If Markheim is interested, others will be. Maybe I can get another 50,000 marks. What do you care about another 50,000? Your father will have enough without it. I'm afraid you're scarcely the one to judge, my dear. Oh, darling, you know I'm crazy about your father. I wouldn't have said that if he hadn't said that all he needs is 10,000 marks a year. 400,000 is enough for 40 years. I have to think of Ricky. It will be his someday. Ricky will never get it. You know you can't take money out of Germany. I'm just as anxious to get it settled as you are, but I have to do it my way. Oh, darling, can't we at least go away for a few days? Just the three of us. You said you'd take us to Munich and Dresden and that little town in the mountains. Well, you and Ricky can go if you like, but I can't go away now, right when things are popping. Well, aren't you going to wait for me? I have to go out to dinner. I told you. Oh, yes, the party officials. Yes. Word in the right place may make all the difference in getting the government's OK on the sale. Is Frida going to be there? Naturally. Without her, I've never been able to meet them. Any objections? By the way, I wouldn't go around saying Schickelgruber if I were you. It happens to be against the law to make fun of the Führer. What can he do? Sue me for libel? Besides other things, it's grounds for divorce. Good night, Coco. Good night. Troubles you? Nothing. I, I just can't sleep. For several days, you don't look so good. Are you ill? It's so hot and still. It's as if everything, the whole world, were holding its breath. It does. How can anyone breathe until we know? Is it war? Eric says no. I hope yes. You want war? It is one way, perhaps the only way, to make an end of these lunatics who spread fear and hatred over the world. Listen. Soldiers. Truck walls are. Where are they all going? To the border. Always to another border. Father, 
Didn't you say the Fry House lived next door? Yeah, right. Somebody's hurt. I'm going down to see. No, no, don't go. You better not. Oh, oh Shh, Father. Shh, can I help? Oh, don't be frightened, Herr Freihoff. I'm Eric Hoffman's wife. The American. Yes, I have seen you. But please, you do not see anything. You know nothing. Go away. But he's hurt. Yes, yes, my, my son. He escaped tonight from the police while they take him to Dachau. They will be here soon to look for him. Now go quick or they find you too. What are you going to do with him? I will hide him in the bushes. He's too weak to go farther tonight. He loses much blood. Oh, lift him. Hurry. Who's that? My other son. He betrays his own brother. Da drüben sind sie. Quick, run. No, it's too late. No, no, run, run. Stehen bleiben, or I schieße. I'm sorry this makes trouble for you, but God bless you. They can't do anything to me. I'm an American. I'm an American. I want to see a lawyer. But this is not America, Frau Hoffmann. I'm a friend of Kenneth Delane, the American newspaper correspondent. You are the wife of a German citizen, Frau Hoffmann. But I don't know anything, I tell you. I'd never seen either of them before. Hmm. You help to hide a man you do not know? Certainly, he was hurt. And of course, he does not mention that others escaped with him. Or say where they went. He never spoke a word. Hmm. He didn't. I don't know anything, really, I don't. Anyway, why ask me? Why not ask them? Oh, thank you. That is very intelligent. But I am afraid it does not serve. The boy died during the night of his wounds, and his father had an unfortunate accident in his cell. So, you see, Gnidia Frau? Excuse, please. Was wollen Sie denn? So. Herr Delaney ist outside. An <laughs> other business. Sagen Sie ihm, dass ich die Dame nicht kenne. Ich werde aber eine Untersuchung fahren lassen. Ja. Jawohl. Na, dann lassen Sie mich doch mit ihm sprechen. Hallo. Ja, <laughs> hier Deckert. Nein, 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 ich habe wirklich keine Ahnung. <laughs> He doesn't appear to know you. Huh? Kenneth, it's Carol! Frank, help me! Dummköpfe! Idiot! Hallo? Hallo? He's gone. That was very foolish of you. He did not hear you at all. Aufmachen! Sofort aufmachen! Was soll das heißen? Frau Hoffmann ist sofort freizulassen. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Ich wollte sie eben freilassen. Die ganze Sache war ein bedauerlicher Irrtum. What do you mean you were just going to let her go? You told me over the phone you didn't know anything about her. I'm so sorry. Uh, Dr. Goebbels is going to hear about this from me. Yes, of course. That's understood. Come on, Carol, you're free. Good old U.S. Marines. Yeah, they didn't hurt you, did they? Mind if I hang on? No, grab a hold. Eric! Oh, darling. Everything okay? Officially, it was a mistake. Free, free as the air. Okay, let's not make a scene here. Aren't you glad to see me? Of course, but it won't do either of us any good to have people know we have been in trouble with them. Is that why you stayed out here? Naturally. Naturally? Well, nothing like being honest, I always say. Don't mind if I seem a little gregarious. It's the herding instinct. Mass demonstrations in the streets of Prague tonight.
are protesting against acceptance of the Hitler terms. The Czech cabinet has resigned. The new cabinet, headed by the one-eyed hero, General Sirovi, is expected to resist. Monsieur Chamberlain prend l'avion pour Godesberg pour conférer avec Monsieur Hitler. The Czechs have completely mobilized. Hier, huit hommes ont été tués et des autres blessés dans le pays sud -est. In a note handed to Lord Halifax, General Sirovi rejected the German demands. Speaking for the American people in a personal plea for peace. Viele Angriffe der tschechischen Polizei auf wehrlose, friedliche Sudetendeutsche. And now for the news in English. The leader speaks tonight to the whole world at the Berlin Sports Palace. office right now. Manhattan transfer everybody else. We've been married and suddenly he seems a stranger. Standing there with his hand up like a mechanical doll, screaming. I've seen men go mad at football games, but nothing like that. He looked as if he were going to pop. <laughs> yeah, it's convulsions of the ego. But I don't they... understand it. They catch it from Shicky. Eric's not the hysterical type. In New York, he was always sweet and gentle. He's never been like this. It doesn't make sense. In America, we go in for other kinds of quacks, thank heaven. Sometimes they are pretty silly. We worship glamour girls and healers and quarterbacks. We can still laugh at ourselves. These poor boys over here lost their sense of humor, if they ever had any. And any nation that doesn't know how to laugh is dangerous. What I can't get through my head is why these people listen to Hitler. When they know in the end it'll only mean bloodshed and chaos. Well... Chicky sold him a gold brick. Probably the greatest gold brick that's ever been sold any peoples in the whole history of time. He's actually made him believe that the only culture in the world is the Nazi culture, that the only form of life worth living is the Nazi form. <laughs> He's a master magician. Fanatical egomaniac with the greatest appetite for power ever seen on this earth since the days of... Genghis Khan, Battle of the Hun. He won't be satisfied until he makes an effort to wipe the democracies right off the map. And I don't mean just England and France either. Yeah, I know, I know. A lot of us Americans laugh it off when we hear things like this, but not me. I've seen too much. I've seen the war machine he's constructed. 
Nobody can tell me he has the slightest intention of letting that machine go to rust. In the long run, of course, he won't win, but before he's through, Shiggy's gonna spill an awful lot of blood. If I could only get Eric back to New York, he'd get over all this. I'm sure he would. Wouldn't he? He would, too. Well, can't you say anything? Yeah. Good night. You better take your socks off. Yeah. Why didn't you say you were awake? I wasn't even going to speak to you, but since you only got tight. Who's tight? I've been lying awake worrying about you since two o'clock. The beer halls have been closed for hours. So what? Where were you all this time? Eric? I saw you coming across the lawn from Frida's just now. You and Otto. I wasn't spying. I got up to take a look at Ricky and just happened to look out his window. All right, I was at Frida's. What's that prove? Don't you think it's a little late to be coming home from a woman's house carrying your shoes? Particularly a woman who's been on the prowl for you for weeks. Eric, darling, I don't care about Frida. Not really. Those things just happen to people. I understand that. Let's forget about it, and I promise never to mention it again. But, Eric, won't you please take Ricky and me away somewhere? Dresden, the mountains, anywhere until we can go back home. Won't you please, Eric? All right. Since you ask for it, you might as well know now. I'm not going back to America. I've decided to stay here and run the factory. For how long? Permanently. You expect me to live here the rest of my life? Well, if you don't like it here, I don't want to make you stay. Meaning you want me to go away and leave you here alone? I want us both to be happy. But you were happy in New York. You always said you were. We had lovely times together. We can again. That wasn't mean, America. Not really mean. I found that out. Just hearing Hitler tonight? What are you, a holy roller? Can any cheap demagogue make you roll over and froth at the mouth? I made up my mind a week ago. Joined the party then. The Nazis? What other party is there? Frida made you do it. Oh, Eric, how could you? Did you have to give her your mind, your will, everything? She had nothing to do with it. Oh, it works while you sleep, like medicine. Skip it. You, you aren't in love with her. Are you? She's a German and so am I. You want to marry her? Naturally. Then I, I suppose you want a divorce. Guess that's the only solution. She can't do that to me. Oh, Eric, this isn't you. She's just got you all mixed up. I won't give you a divorce. Very well. I'll divorce you. On what grounds? You couldn't. You ridiculed a Führer. Otto heard you that night. He was in the hall. He told Frieda. He'll corroborate my testimony. Very well. That's what you really want? Go ahead and get your divorce. I'll leave for New York this morning. I'm sorry. Do me one favor, will you? Don't say anything to Ricky. Just, just say you have to stay here on business. I'll explain it to him sometime later. You can trust me to be fair. Ricky's staying here with me. Don't be silly, Eric. A child always goes with his mother. Not that I'd mind for a few months at a time when he's a little older. He belongs here. 
He's a German under the law. He is not. He's an American. You can't make a Nazi out of Ricky. I won't let you. He belongs to me. Any civilized court anywhere in the world would... What do you know about courts? Do you think any Nazi judge will let you take a party member's child away? I know what I'm talking about. I've consulted lawyers. Lawyers? You planned all this? Where do you think you're going? To consult a few people myself. At this hour? I can't stand being in the same room with you another minute. I don't even want to breathe the same air you breathe. Heil, heel. Well, there's only one thing to do. You and Ricky have got to get out of Germany today, this afternoon, without Eric's knowing anything about it. But how, possibly? Well, first, get Ricky out of the house on some excuse. Take him for a walk. I'll meet you in the park near your home with my car. Now, don't bring anything with you, see? Just your passport. You're traveling on a separate passport, aren't you? Yes. Well, that's perfect now. Leave the rest to me. Just give me a couple hours. Let's see, it's 9.15. Meet me at 11.30, just inside the park entrance. I'll have your train, a plane ticket, your boat reservations, some luggage and clothes, enough to get you to Paris anyhow. And before Eric wakes up to what's happened, you'll be clean across the border. You don't mind flying, do you? I'd crawl on my hands and knees to get Ricky out of here. I don't know how to thank you. Don't try. Oh, incidentally, uh, I expect to be in New York by January. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna take charge of a special cable desk they're setting up in case of war. Would you like that? No. Oh, New York will look awfully good to me right now. Say, I forgot you'll need some cash, won't you? How about 200? That'll keep you going until you get in touch with your friends in New York, won't it? You're very generous. Why, it has been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> what I really mean is you're swell. Thanks. Where are we going, Mummy? For a walk, dear, just for a walk. Why? Oh, hold still, darling. Mummy's in a hurry. Why? Don't ask so many questions. There. Carol. Yes? Why taking Ricky? Park just for a little while. But I want him to go downtown with me. As soon as Frieda and I have finished talking with Father. Do you begrudge me my last few minutes with him? You said you are not leaving until tonight. I'll have him back by four. No, I want him now. Go on upstairs until I call you. Mommy. Eric, please. Yes, Sean. Yes, Father. Father wants to see you. No. Uh. Thank you that you come. Sit down, Liebes. Ah, Eric tells me you leave Berlin tonight. Yes, I. We. It seemed best. I understand. I hear everything. We are not ashamed of our love. You don't take Ricky with you? He's staying with me. That is your wish? No, no, of course it isn't. But Eric says I can't have him. You try to take a child away from his own mother? <laughs> you cannot. A child belongs to the state now. Belongs first to his mother. That isn't the law. It is the law of nature. To hang by our tails from the trees was once a natural law. The world changes whether you old men like it or not. Yes, I am old. That is true. But I am not yet dead. And so long as I live, I do not permit you to do this, Eric. I don't want to discuss it. Do you not injure enough of us? Must you destroy your own son? Destroy? It will make a man of him, a real man, instead of a sponge. Eric, ten years you are away. You are still my son. Still you hear my voice, no? Is there not deep inside 
any feeling of the small boy I used to know. He cannot be dead. Only sleeping. Nicht wahr? That warm-hearted, intelligent boy that used to sit on the arm of my chair while I read to him from Schiller and Goethe and Thomas Mann. Always the same sentimental dreck. When people talk of the old Germany, it's always about books and music and painting. Life was gemütlich then. What did it matter that we'd been surrounded by enemies, robbed of our living space? Everything was gemütlich. Let the Vaterland die, so long as it dies charmingly. Please, Eric, my son, take this woman if you insist. Follow your leader, your antichrist who steals from us everything that makes life worthwhile. But do not chain your own child in this jungle, making of him an animal like all the others. Allow him to go to America so he can grow up to be a human being, not a beast knowing only to tear others apart in the name of survival. No. Was ist deine Antwort, mein Sohn? Nein. I told you I've made up my mind. It's final. So. Also. Wait, please. One more thing. I must hurry, be quick. You were in not such a hurry. You would not do well to listen to what I have to say. Power, force, that is all you respect. You make me use it, Eric. If you do not allow Ricky to leave tonight for America with his mother, Tomorrow, I go to the Nazis and tell them that your mother was a Jewess. Was hast du gesagt? <laughs> that trick. Mach dir nur keine Sorgen. Ohne Beweis ist seine Aussage wertlos. Proof, yes. I give it to them. Your mother came from Belgium, as you know. We were married there. The records still exist. They show she was a full Jewess. The night the Reichstag burned, I went to Brussels. I could guess what was going to happen here. It was easy to pay for fake documents saying she was an Aryan. But the original records are still there for anyone to see. What can I do? Du bist ein Jude. Nein. I can't be. I'd know it. I'd feel it. Frieda. Liebling. much, my son. From it you will learn what you would have done to others. I wish I could help you, but I'm all dead inside. I can't even feel sorry for you. Oh, Eric, can't you see that's what this sort of thing does to people? All this hating and grabbing what you want. It kills everything worthwhile. All feeling. Love.
Юля. Юля. Don't forget, I'm looking forward to seeing you in New York. I'm afraid that won't be possible. What do you mean? The home office has changed my orders. I'm to stay here now. For how long? For the duration. Oh. You can do me a great big favor, though. Why? You know that little drugstore in the corner of uh, 50th and Madison? Mm -hmm. Drop in there sometime. Order a hamburger and a chocolate ice cream soda. And <laughs> when you do, you think of me, will you? I will. All right, goodbye. Bye-bye, Ricky. Bye. 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 Bye.